Well, good morning, everybody. Today is December 5th, 2018. Wednesday, Wednesday Bible study. All right, so go ahead and grab yourself something to drink, grab your Bible, and we'll get going here today. You know, gang, on our travels through the Bible, sometimes the Lord has us stop along the way to look at something he wants to show us. So we've been studying the kings lately. Started with 1 Kings and 1 Chronicles. And then we just finished 2 Kings. And our next stop will be 2 Chronicles. Okay? But on the way to 2 Chronicles, the Lord put heavily on my heart that he wanted us to learn something in between. Okay, we're going to do that. So, if you would please turn your Bibles, let me get my eyeballs on here, to Acts. I'm sorry, Romans, not Acts. Romans, okay? Chapter 1, verse 16 of Romans. That's where we're going to start. Okay, so go ahead and get there. I'll wait for you. If you need more time, go ahead and just shut the video off. We'll be here waiting for you when you get back. But if you're ready, let's go ahead and get into this, okay? All right. Like I said, Book of Romans, the epistle of Paul, the apostle, to the Romans. Okay? This is a letter from Paul to the Romans, the Christians in Rome, the followers of Christ, okay? I'm not going to read from verse 1 down to verse 15 because a lot of that has to do with who Paul is, okay? We already know who Paul is. I think we'll just skip over the formalities and we'll get right into the meat of this because there's some meat here, no doubt, okay? You guys ready? Verse 16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. You shouldn't be either. You should speak freely of the gospel of Christ. Continuing, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed, from faith to faith, as it is written. The just shall live by faith. We talk about faith a lot, you know, because that's one thing that Jesus impresses upon the apostles a lot through the New Testament. It's faith, living by faith. You've got to have faith. Verse 18, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Starting to talk about judgment for the unrighteous, for everybody. Everybody goes under judgment. Verse 19, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath shewed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. He makes sure everybody understands. Verse 21. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, 
they became fools. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Hmm. Verse 25. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator who is blessed forever? Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile afflictions. Affections, I'm sorry, vile affections. They are to be afflictions, but for right now they're just affections. Sorry, I misspoke there. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. So they're talking about sodomites. Paul's talking about sodomites in here. And he's talking that even the women are using their parts unnaturally. Kind of sounds like today, doesn't it? Especially when you got these uh, women dancing around in the streets with vaginas on their heads. What? Okay. Verse 27. And likewise also the men. Mm-hmm. Leaving their natural use of the women. Burning in their lusts one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly. And receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat. So they're given, and they're getting. Pretty gross. Pretty gross. Verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. So, this goes along with the research that I've done, a lot of people aren't going to be able to swallow this. Okay? It's a theory of mine. Take it as such. It's not gospel or anything like that. But I see evidence that in 2012, when the United States Supreme Court issued their ruling on gay marriage, which did not make gay marriage legal. They are a high court that issued a ruling. In order to make a law, it must go through the processes of both houses and the president's desk. It's not a law. All it is is a ruling that the Supreme Court made that put us under judgment. As you can see, these are things that go against God. But in doing so, in going against God, and in being in open rebellion against God, then God has turned us over to our own sins, to a reprobate mind. And that's why we're just seeing this go crazy now. Because mankind has been turned over to his own sins. We see it in a lot of things. A lot of things. My point, I think God had enough. Kind of like when the children of Israel insisted on having a king. If 
finally he went, all right, you guys want a king? I'm your king. You guys want a human king? <laughs> Here's Sal. Have at it. And then we've read about all the kings. We know about what kind of kings they've had. Not godly. A lot of them, not godly. And let's move on here. Verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. Oh, okay, we already read that. Verse 29, I'm sorry. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud boasters, inventors of evil things. Hmm, how many evil things have they invented? Uh, let's think about the Arch of Baal, maybe. Disobedient to parents. All right, parents, let's have a chat real quick. I'm going to stop right here for a second. Let's have a chat. Things are a little different nowadays, aren't they? Your kids are little snots. They won't do what you tell them to do. And if you try to enforce your rules on them, then they whine to the school or to the school counselor, who in turn calls and starts getting into your business. Government in our business. Schools are government. They're government run. They're government indoctrination centers. And they're messing up your kids. Is it really worth working two jobs to pay for a babysitter? Or that fancy car that you're driving around? Or that fancy TV that you just bought? Is it really worth it? Or is it worth it to be frugal, to be humble, and not buy all that junk? And keep your kids home with you. Homeschool them. You and your significant other, your husband or wife, decide on which one of you your job is more important to the income of the family. The other parent needs to take a step back. Maybe work from home. Maybe try something different. But you need to be there for your kids. You have no idea what a difference it makes. Pull your kid out of public school and teach them at home. If you're looking for a program, check out Easy Peasy. That's the program that we use. They don't do Common Core. It's all traditional. Plus, there's theology in it. Bible study. Check it out. Easy peasy. All right, let's move on. <sighs> Verse 31. Without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable and unmerciful. Let's start over and read that again. Okay? Verse 29, let's start there and we'll read right through that again. Okay? Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. Verse 32. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So birds of a feather flock together. All these people filled with the iniquity 
sinful, horrible, unrepentant. They like to flock together because that way they don't have to listen to us darn Christians, us followers of Christ. They don't have to listen to us. They can listen to their own Satanistic garbage bouncing it off of one another. Chapter 2. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doest the same things. So you got all these people that are out there trying to judge other people, but they're just as bad. Really? Verse 2. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. Judgment. Judgment. Hello? Hey, it's me, Judgment. Open the door. It's coming. And I got the dogs all wound up. Verse 3, And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God. Nobody's going to escape judgment. We're all going to be judged. Yeah, we're all going to be judged. That's why I try to tell everybody, inform people, and let them know the importance of repenting. Every video. Every single video. There's a reason. Verse 4, Or despitest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. God's trying to show you. God's trying to help you. Jesus died on the cross for our sins, suffered horrible, horrible beatings, and was nailed to a cross through his wrists and his feet and died on the cross for your sins, for my sins, for all mankind's sins. We don't have to do animal sacrifices anymore. We don't. But you do have to repent. You have to ask for forgiveness. You have to seek the Lord for forgiveness. In your heart. And use your mouth. Use your mouth for something besides drooling out of while you're watching TV. Verse 5, But after thy hardness and impotent heart, treasurest up, unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Don't be hard-hearted. Open your heart to God. Don't be stiff-necked. Open your heart to God. He's there. Have faith. F-A-I-T-H. Faith. Verse 6, who will render to every man according to his deeds? To them who by patient continuance in, doing, in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality eternal life. But unto them that are contentious, do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. This is for... Everybody else. Verse 9. Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil. Of the Jew first and also the Gentile. <clears throat> All right. Got that? Let's move on to verse 10. But glory honor and peace to every man that worketh good to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. These are the promises of God. 
These are the promises of God. The reason that Jesus died on the cross. This is what I'm trying to get at. This is what the Lord wants us to know. Certainly ain't me that picked this out. I was sitting around last night watching Pete Santilli interview Owen Schroyer. Good interview if you can find it. And all of a sudden, I started getting very heavily, very heavily, an impression of Scripture. And it was the Scripture that we just read about God giving us over to our sins. Yeah, very heavily. Like, it slapped me upside the head. I had to stop watching the interview and dig into my Bible and find out what the Lord was trying to tell me. This is what he's trying to tell us, folks. It's right here. Right here in front of you. We just read it. We just read it. Yeah, it might be a letter from Paul to the Romans, but it's inspired by God. This is God's will. This is what he expects from us. So what does it all mean for me, you might ask? For you. It means eternal life. In heaven. With God our creator, Jesus Christ our savior, and the Holy Spirit there. The Godhead. There's very little time, folks. There's very little time. We're heading into some serious tribulation. Yeah, I know there's going to be a lot of people that tell me, oh, you can't uh, say that we're going into tribulation because we won't know the day or the time. As you've seen through our studies, tribulation is perpetual for the iniquity of man. We see it over and over. Tribulation doesn't just happen in Revelation. Tribulation happens since the inception of the world. Since God created the world, there's been tribulation. And there's been judgment. Judgment is here. We're going to start seeing horrific things, everybody. We're going to start seeing really horrific things. That's part of the reason why I gave up the border struggle, the the political inequity, the fight that's been going on for years between the patriots and the government. It's not going to stop anything. That battle is not going to save one person. Not one person. The only thing that can save us is to repent. To get on your knees and repent of your sins. Ask the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive your sins. With your mouth, mean it in your heart. If you don't mean it, you're going to be cursed. And there could be generations after you, your children and their children, that are cursed also because of your messing around with this. It says in the Bible that when certain things, certain generations are cursed for certain iniquity, it's generational. You want your kids and your grandkids to be cursed because you didn't fix the problem? Gee, it kind of sounds like what's going on in the world. If our parents would have seen what was going on and informed us of what was going on, maybe we could have fixed the problem. Because back when we were all children, I'm 50 years old. Back when we were all children, we were still going to church with our neighbors. We were still fellowshipping. 
in church with our neighbors? How many people? How many of you? How many all of you guys out there? I see you all sitting there. How many of all of you remember going to church, seeing your next door neighbor and his family or her family, the kids that live down the block, the kids that live up the street, the old lady that lives two doors down that you would help to take out her trash and shovel her walks for her, and she'd make you cookies and stuff. What happened to all that? What happened to it? We've been overwhelmed with lies and sin. And these Satanists that run the world have convinced us all that this is what we're supposed to be doing. How about the Protestant priest who has come out and she has asked all the young girls in their church, actually across the country, to send her their purity rings. Now, if you know anything about a purity ring, a purity ring is given to a young girl who is just entering puberty as a promise for her to keep her purity until marriage. Well, this priest, boy, I... I pity her so, gang. I pity her soul because on Judgment Day, if she's not repentant, she's going to be in a bad way. She's asked for everybody to send them their rings, their purity rings, so that she can melt down these gold rings and make a solid gold vagina. What? Isn't that what we just finished reading about? I mean, I can't even wrap my mind around it. It's so insane. Just like the tour that they've got the Arch of Baal going on. It's insane. Are you kidding? The Lord would be in his right to toast the whole earth, just burn us all to a cinder because mankind is so corrupt and so absurd and so ridiculous. Repent. Seek the beautiful face of Jesus Christ. Form a relationship with Jesus Christ. The only way to the Father is through the Son. We've went over that so many times. And get ready, because this is going to affect us all. Nobody gets out easy, guys. No pre-trib. No. No. The Lord's not going to take us up until He's ready to take us up. And I think we've got some lessons to learn first. Part of the tribulation, part of the judgment. Gang, get right with God. Get your house in order. Get your family to repent and to get right with the Lord. Get your neighbor. Love your neighbor. Love them enough that you talk to them about Jesus Christ. Ask them over for a Bible study. Yeah, your wife makes really awesome hors d'oeuvres, man. She makes killer hors d'oeuvres. So ask the neighbors over for some and some Bible study. Love your neighbor. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And love Jesus above everything. No golden vagina. No vagina hats. No psychosodomy. No more sacrificing our children to Moloch. Come on, everybody. Get on board. Get with it. Let's go. Unless you want to burn in hell for all eternity. Judgment Day is going to be really tough on you. Let's not make it that way. 
All right, gang, that's all I got. Y'all have a great day. Have a great rest of your week. I'm hoping that things don't go south sometime today or tomorrow or Friday for that matter. Keep your head on a swivel. Situational awareness. Stay armed. This could happen at any time. You may need to defend a lot of people. Your brothers and sisters in Christ are depending on you to be prepared. Are you up to it? Or are you just going to sit around the house with the remote control watching football on Sundays and reality TV the rest of the time? It's a choice. God gives us free will. It's a choice. Who do you choose? God bless. We will see you on Sunday. And that's when we're going to delve into Second Chronicles. All right? Unless the Lord wants to take us somewhere else. If he wants to take us somewhere else, you know, he's our tour guide. The Lord's our tour guide through the Bible. So wherever he wants to take us, that's where we're going to go. Okay? All right. Y'all have a great day. God bless. We'll see you later. Bye.